I was working through some practice GRE problems, and this came up. This, this using this equation, t equals 2 pi squared over L over g, for a pendulum. And the, the question is, that's the period of oscillation for a pendulum, but why? What if you couldn't remember that? What if you forgot that formula? Which is why I didn't like that question in the GRE, because if, if you have to derive that equation in a very short amount of time, it's really difficult, but you can derive it. Personally, not a big fan of pendulums in the introductory curriculum because they're actually way more complicated than people like to think. So I'm going to I'm going to derive that equation for you. Uh, there's more than one way to do it. Uh, I'm going to do it the way that I think would be the easiest for an introductory level student to see. Uh, okay, hold on. Let's get to work then. So if I have a mass on a string of length l and it's uh, pulled an angle theta away from the the vertical. Well, there's two forces acting on that. There's the gravitational force, mg, pulling straight down, and then there's the tension. It's a complicated problem because as this moves, the, uh, the tension force changes both direction and magnitude, and you can't really even calculate that. I mean, you, you can, but it's not easy. So one, one thing that we can do is just to deal with the motion of this in the direction it's constrained to move in that circle. So let's call this distance s right there. And so I want to use Newton's second law in the s direction, which is the along this arc length. Imagine I flatten it out and made it a string. Well, the only force that pushes in the s direction is a part of the gravitational force. So I have that angle theta right there. So I, if I redraw that, it looks like this. Here's mg. There's theta. So this is the component of the gravitational force in the direction of theta. So I can say, um, if I write Newton's second law, f net s, this is in the s direction, it's going to be m a s. And the net force in the x direction, if this is the s direction, this is going to be negative m g sine theta, right? Because I'm dealing with, this is m g, this is the opposite side of this right triangle, and so that's sine theta. And that's going to be m a s. Now, I need to get the acceleration in terms of the angle, too. So, I mean, if you remember your relationships between uh, quantities, we have this. s equals r theta uh, omega, no wait, v equals r omega a equals r alpha. Do you remember that? So this says that if I move a certain distance uh, along this arc length and I take that angle in radians and multiply it by the radius of the circle, which is L in this case, so it's actually going to be L theta, I get that. If I want to find the velocity of this, um, then I multiply the angular velocity by R where the angular velocity is in radians. In this case, that's actually L omega. And the same thing is true for this, for the angular, for the acceleration in this direction, the tangential acceleration, I take the radius of the circle, L, times the angular velocity, alpha. Now remember, that's going to be the second derivative of theta with respect to time. It's the angular, that is the definition of the angular acceleration. So that means that I have, putting all this together, I have negative mg sine theta equals m, second derivative of theta with respect to time. If you wanted to stop right there, you could. You could say, hey, well, you can't. Okay, we can cancel the mass. That's one thing that cancels. Oh, wait, where'd my L go? I forgot my L. Sorry, L. Okay, so um, what do we do now? Well, the first next step, let me rewrite this equation. Negative g sine theta equals L second derivative of theta with respect to time. That's what we have. Now the next step is to say, what if theta is small? I'll say small. And if you plot sine theta as a function of theta, it looks like this. And so if you're in this region right down here, sine theta is approximately equal to theta. So for small angles, I can replace sine theta with theta. So now I have negative g theta. Uh, I'll put this negative, well, let's say, is L. Um, I really don't like writing this. 
I'm going to write this as L theta double dot. We, this is a notation we use in more advanced physics where the, each dot represents the derivative respect of time. So I have uh, L theta double dot. And this looks better, don't you think? If you want to write it that way, write it that way. I'm not going to stop you. Okay, now let's solve for, um, what do I want to do? Do I want to solve for theta or theta double dot? Let's solve for um, theta double dot. No, let's solve for theta. So this says theta is negative L over G theta double dot. Is that okay? So that's our differential equation. If you Now if you wanted to stop, you could. You could stop and say, oh, that looks like X equals negative uh, M over K A. Right, that's for a spring. And then you can say, well, I know the, the period of oscillation for a spring is square root of m over k, and so that does it. And that, it's the same form. But we're not going to do that. We're going to go all the way. So let's say, if I, here this says, if I take the derivative twice of my function theta, I get back the same thing. Actually, I guess this should be, I should solve for theta double dot. This says theta double dot is negative g over l theta. This says if I take the derivative twice, I get this constant back with a negative sign. So what, what happens, what functions can I take the derivative of twice and get the same thing back with a negative sign? And that's trig functions. That's one way to do it. There's more than one way to do it. So let's just guess that theta as a function of t is a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t. That's just a guess. If I do that, I can say theta dot, the first derivative of this with respect to time, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but I gotta take the derivative of the inside, which, get, which is omega. Omega, the derivative of omega t is omega. So I get negative a omega sine omega t. The derivative of sine is cosine, but I have to take the derivative of the inside. So I get plus b omega cosine omega t. Now I need to take the derivative again, theta double dot. It's going to be, now the derivative of sine is cosine, so I get negative a omega squared cosine omega t. And then I get minus b omega squared sine omega t. This is equal to negative omega squared theta, right? If I factor out the negative omega squared, I have a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t, which is what I started with. So that means that Theta double dot is negative, if I have this as my theta, then theta double, and it is a solution, then this omega squared has to be equal to, omega squared has to be, I made a mistake. Theta double dot, oh, no, I did it the other way. So I said theta double dot, I always get this confused, is negative g over l theta. So that means that omega squared is g over l. Now, we define omega, that means omega is the square root of g over l. And, and I'll get one more piece of paper. I thought I'd fit it all on the sheet of paper. But. Now, the simple part, I can say uh, omega is 2 pi times the frequency. So that's going to be the square root of g over l. And, ooh, that's the square root. And the period is one over the frequency. So this is gonna be equal to, um, if I take the frequency is one over two pi square root of g over l, the period's gonna be one over that, which is two pi square root of l over g. Okay, so again, you couldn't do that. You couldn't do that in um, on the, the GRE, you would just wouldn't have enough time. Um, but w one of the things that I like to do is if you do that once, if you work through this once, it kind of helps you remember the equation. And that's one of the differences between just memorizing a bunch of equations and really understanding where they come from. So if you really understand where they come from, it's easier to memorize. And you could reproduce it if you want. So that's one of the ways to derive this. There's more than one way, like I said. Uh, that's that's the, the short and quickest way I could do it. That took me 10 minutes, so. Hope that helps.